audiovisual, the capacity of music to generate emotions is widely used as a support to the narrative. However, hearing impaired people cannot access the information conveyed by music. To overcome this issue, captioning is the reference assistive tool for hearing impairment accessibility and must follow special regulations. For example, in the case of music, it must be subtitled in the upper right of the screen with a small text in brackets summarizing the type of music or the sensation transmitted or the identification of the piece. But this textual representation does not transmit the emotional information contained in the soundtrack. On the contrary, it produces higher activation of voluntary attentional circuits. Therefore, we need to provide other nonverbal representations of the sound to trigger more direct emotional reactions. Different studies on music and emotion have shown that mode and tempo are the parameters that most influence the type of emotion generated by music. Brain regions that are consistently reported to be involved in musical affective processing are the auditory cortex and superior temporal cortex in the ascending auditory system and the frontal insular regions, insula, inferior frontal gyrus, and the medial frontal cortex. In this study, we explored the potential of the touch channel through the vibrotactile stimulation to elicit such experience. There are astonishing correspondences between the sense of hearing and the sense of touch. Both are sensitive to mechanical pressure variations, although the hearing system can process vibrations from 20 Hz to 20,000 Hz, while the tactile system covers from 5 to 1,000 Hz. To get an idea, let us consider the range of piano keys from the note C1 to the note G5. In this work, we wanted to test whether a simple vibral tactile stimulation based on a rhythmic pattern could elicit the same brain areas that are activated in normal hearing people when watching an audiovisual excerpt. For this purpose, normal hearing and hearing impaired participants were recruited to establish the control and the experimental group respectively. We create two audiovisual pieces of emotionally neutral image as landscapes. Neutral images were used to allow the measurement of the music and vibral tactile effects. The soundtrack was built with an excerpt from Niccolo Paganini, Violin Concerto No. 1, with fast tempo, 106 beats per minute, and major scale and an excerpt from Samuel Barber Adiago with a slow tempo, 60 beats per minute, and minor scale. A glove with vibrating motors was built. The motors were placed on each of three specific locations. Each beat of a motor was 1 kHz square signal burst of 102 milliseconds. Beats were produced at the beats per minute of musical excerpts and synchronized with them. The glove was controlled with an Arduino microcontroller. The videos were organized in three different conditions. In condition one, normal hearing participants watched the videos with the musical soundtrack. In condition two, participants with hearing impairment watched the videos with no sound. In condition three, participants with hearing impairment watched the same muted videos with a vibrating glove. We use 64 channel EEG records to measure and compare the brain areas activated by the vibrotactile stimulation in hearing impaired participants with the brain areas activated by music in normal hearing participants while watching the same videos. We averaged the results of each of the three conditions and we considered the brain areas with maximum statistically significant activation compared with the average state. What did we find? Regarding condition 1, the control group showed brain activations consistent with the existing literature, superior temporal pole, auditory cortex, insula, and inferior frontal gyrus. In condition 2, muted videos shown to the experimental group, the maximum activation peaks were found in the frontal areas, associated with higher voluntary attentional resources. Finally, in the condition 3, experimental group watching muted videos with vibrotactile stimulation, we again found significant activations in the same areas of condition 1. 
The most remarkable difference with condition 1 is the inversion of the laterality. This activation of the auditory cortex is in concordance with other studies showing that tactile vibrations activate the auditory cortex. What has been shown specifically in our experiment is that the integration of very simple vibrotactile stimuli with neutral images can enhance the activation of auditory and emotional cortex areas thus approaching the brain reactions to the ones of hearing subjects exposed to a complete audiovisual experience. We would finally like to thank the volunteers that participated in the experiment.